My first memory of HIV and AIDS was when someone I went to high school with died and he was young and nobody would talk about it. Nobody would say what he died of. His family wasn't there. It was all very mysterious. And at the same time, the reports were coming out of this plague that caused people to shun other human beings. And thousands of people died alone and in pain, many of them without their families, many of them without their friends. But there was this other thing that emerged at the time, which was this activism and fierce solidarity in the gay community that began to emerge. So at the same time, it was a horrible plague that caused people to treat other human beings in a way no one should ever be treated, but at the same time, gave rise to an extraordinary commitment and level of activism. Then a couple years later, I remember reading some of the first reports about the impact of HIV and AIDS in Sub-Saharan Africa. It was breathtaking. All the projections, and very quickly, all the facts, were that it was carving out able-bodied producers from communities. It was it was taking the young trained economists in ministries. It was taking the leaders of civil society organizations. It was taking women, many of whom had no voice. And the projections were terrifying, were literally uh, that it was a threat to the stability and success and development of countries across the continent. I think what's extraordinary to me is where we are today. Uh, this conference is I think a platform for motivation to go the last few miles and get to that AIDS-free generation. At the same time, I think it's a celebration of something extraordinary. The international community has built a foundation, a sort of three-legged stool, and on one leg is science. Constant investments in science and a commitment by everybody, regardless of political views or anything else, to follow the facts and do what works. The second is collaboration. Uh, this is an extraordinary movement that cuts across class lines, ethnic lines, borders, political lines, and unites people in ways that I'm not sure we've ever seen before. And I think the third piece is dignity. I think that finally, uh, those who died, many of whom are known, whose names are on the quilt, but many of whom are not known, uh, are being given their dignity. And I think we've built that foundation of science and collaboration and respect and dignity that can get us to an AIDS-free generation. So as I look at this conference and the events and the quilt back on the mall, I think I come away with three things I think one is that we should never allow that collaboration to break down. And I think there's a fierce commitment on everyone's part to cooperate across the board so we can get this done. Uh, I think the second is to keep going. It's very easy to say, wow, look how far we've come. Nobody would, would say HIV or AIDS in the beginning of this. And today, it's part of our international discourse about how to fight this battle. Uh, and I think the third thing is don't ever forget the beginning. I think for people who don't know the beginning, go learn about it. There's an important moral lesson about what can happen when we don't care for each other, just as there's an extraordinary lesson in what we can do when we join hands and fight the fight.